French President Emmanuel Macron says that his phone calls with U.S. President Donald Trump and other world leaders were just like sausages. Better not explain what's inside. During a news press conference, Macron was asked about a media report saying that a phone call between the French leader and Trump last week had been terrible. Borrowing a famous quote from 19th century Prussian statesman Otto von Bismarck, Macron summed up his policy of refraining from making off-the-record comments about his conversations with other world leaders. Comme le disait Bismarck, si on expliquait aux gens la recette de la saucisse, il n'est pas sûr qu'ils continueraient à en manger. Et donc, euh, je suis attaché à ce que les gens euh, voient le plat servi, mais je ne suis pas persuadé que le commentaire de la cuisine aide au bon service du plat ou à sa bonne consommation. Mais nous, à Paris, on n'a pas l'habitude de faire du commentaire euh, de comment ça s'est passé, si c'est chaud, si c'est froid, si c'est chaleureux, si c'est terrible. On fait et on avance. Et depuis le début, j'ai toujours fait et avancé. Et donc j'aurai à nouveau, lors du G7, une discussion utile et franche avec le président Trump, comme j'en ai depuis le premier jour. Euh, en effet... Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, too, echoed the need for confidentiality. I think Bismarck said you don't show in polite company how you make sausages and how you make politics. Uh, but I think, too, that... Uh, uh, in this city, in um, uh, the great uh, peace conference following World War I, Woodrow Wilson, a very idealistic American president, came and he said he believes in open covenants openly arrived at. Uh, from my experience in uh, public life, I think I would amend that and I would say I believe in open covenants secretly arrived at because it, hel it, 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 it um, I think it benefits the advancement of uh, discussions to be able to keep um, confidential things that are being discussed. Macron, polled by his predecessor, Hollande's frequent off-the-record comments to journalists has kept the press at a distance since his election last year and banned his aides from giving behind-the-scenes accounts of his presidency. He said on Tuesday that he would have a useful and frank exchange with Trump at the next G7 summit in Canada on June 7 to 8 about both issues on which they agree and those where they disagree. And to bring us more details on this news story, I am joined in by our senior correspondent Ramesh Ramachandran who joins us live from the newsroom. Let's quickly go across to Ramesh. Ramesh, taking into consideration, in consideration Macron's recent comments on Donald Trump, what's cooking between the two presidents? Morning, Akanksha. Now, we know that France is a close ally of the U.S. Uh, they enjoy a, a good rapport between the two for many decades now. But the fact is that over the last couple of years, they've had a love-hate you know, love relationship between Macron and President Trump. Remember, there are many contentious issues bedeviling the relationship, least of all the American pull out of the Paris Climate Change Accord, which was trumpeted by Macron as a big achievement for the world at large, but the, um, Trump decided to pull out of the summit. The second was issue was on the NATO uh, funding. The third issue was the Iran nuclear deal, America pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal, which much the chagrin of Macron and his European allies. And last but not the least, the tariffs imposed by Trump on French products. So there have been many issues of contention between France and uh, the U.S., including Macron and Trump. But the fact is, Trump is a temperamental politician. He's known to make caustic remarks against world leaders. So in a sense, Macron is correct when he says that let these talks remain confidential and not be made, you know, allowed to come into the public domain. So in the interest of diplomacy, probably it's a wise decision. Right. Ramesh, if this is what Macron has to say, you know, France being a close ally to the U.S., what can we expect out of the Trump-Kim meeting, knowing that relations between North Korea and the U.S. have already been volatile? Now, these are two very temperamental politicians, uh, Akanksha, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un. They are temperamental, unconventional, unorthodox, unpredictable. So you never know the outcome of the Trump-Kim summit come the 12th of June in Singapore and Sentosa Island, which is the venue of the summit at the Capella Hotel there. But the fact is that both sides are making tentative strides towards at least bridging the gap that exists between the two sides. Now, Trump says North Korea must give up all its nuclear weapons. Kim says... We will do that maybe going forward, but not immediately. So 
both sides trying to bridge the differences, narrow the gaps, so to speak, going forward, at least keep up the pretenses of keeping the talks going. Remember, this is the first time ever in the history of America that a sitting American president will be meeting in North Korea, and it's a big deal for America. So in the, in the backdrop of the failed Iran nuclear deal, a country where America has pulled out the deal, Trump is a, in a, is a, a sort of a put more pressure on himself to ensure that the Trump key meeting succeeds going forward. So and he's making efforts to ensure that the meeting remains on the track, on cards, and that there are no surprises really there uh, towards the end of their June 12 meeting. Right, Ramesh. Thank you so much for bringing us all those details.